Okay, let's talk about a technique uh, um, to measure risk. I'm not going to make you do this technique. In fact, uh, you probably won't use it. But I want you to uh, understand that there are ways to uh, associate risk with probabilities that are far more technical than the 60-40 probability we had in our simple little problem. So example, Mar Mar for example, Monte Carlo simulation, which is... Uh, a real uh, a further attempt to model real world uncertainty. It takes its name from the European casino. It analyzes projects in the way one might analyze gambling strategies. So it basically takes into account all of the different probabilities. So we use two factors, pass and not pass. So it's 60-40. That's really quite simple. It's a coin flip. But what if it's not two factors, but say 22 factors that are involved? moving all at once and all having different probabilities and ranges associated with them. All of that moves moving at once requires a computer and requires special software and we're not necessarily going to use that but the idea is something that you should be aware of. So when we think of Monte Carlo simulation imagine a serious blackjack player who wants to know if they should take the third card whenever the first cards total 16. Now, what they could do is play thousands and thousands of hands, which could be very expensive, or they could sit there and play them uh, by themselves, which would be incredibly boring. Uh, so they could do either one. What Monte Carlo does is simulate all of these thousands of practice hands of all different combinations that could come up, and they're going to use the we could use these in capital budgeting as well. What could come up with the cure of the common cold? Well, lots of things, and it would be more than the 60/40 probability that I showed you as an example. A Monte Carlo simulation in capital budgeting uh, is a highly probabilistic uh, step, um, which is beyond sensitivity analysis or scenario analysis. The interactions between the variables are explicitly uh, specified in the Monte Carlo simulation. Uh, you can uh, look at the uh, history of the variables moving together. For example, if there's a strong cold and flu season, there would be a strong uh, correlation with uh, using common cure remedies for the common cold. Uh, so that would be high probability. Uh, the weather could be a probability. You could look at manufacturing costs as a uh, factor, uh, and so on. So these are all of the, there's a multitude of factors you would put into the uh, software, and then you would run sensitivity analysis as they all changed uh, one by one and over time. So you would run multitude of scenarios. Imagine how many different combinations in a hand of blackjack is the last card. If, uh, if you have 16, what are the differences of the last card? Well, there's going to be quite a few depending on how many cards are in the shoe or in the deck uh, that you're using. Well, this is true in uh, pharmaceutical uh, manufacturing as well. There's a lot of varieties of uh, scenarios, and so you run every one of them. And so by running every one of them, you get a graph that looks like this one. This is 10-year uh, simulation results, nominal dollars, assumes a million dollars invested in the S&P 500, 100 simulated future investment paths are shown. So the, the summary are the worst simulation shows uh, $500,000 in return, which is obviously a loss in your million dollars. The average is $2.3 million positive. Um, the median is. Uh, the average... Uh, is 2.7 and the best simulation is um, uh, 8.9. So you can see that the variables that they've thrown into this uh, stock market Monte Carlo analysis uh, show that you're going to probably get 2.3 to 2.7 million is the is the middle of the road. But you could lose depending on the scenario or you could win huge. Uh, so part of the Monte Carlo uh, simulation is to go beyond sensitivity analysis, allow multiple variables to be run by a computer, and then come up with a distribution of a uh, representation of what the results could be, what the probabilities would be. We went 60-40, cure common cold at 60%, probably not realistic. That was the way we did this, this that one particular case. Obviously, one of the ones that you would do in real life is to say, okay, it's not 60%. Let's say it's 10% that we find something that really matters. And if it is 10%, well, 
maybe we won't do the project. We'd have to run back through the numbers, of course, to find out if we would or not. But probably not. It's probably not high enough at that point. Uh, so you can see Monte Carlo simulation just allows lots and lots and lots of variables to run through different scenarios and come up with uh, a probability uh, that is a little more exacting, a little more detailed than the 60-40 coin flip that we uh, talked about in our original scenario under Stewart Pharmaceuticals. Uh, so I wanted to put that in here just to give you an idea that not everything in the world is a 60-40 coin flip and the world is actually quite complicated when you're trying to uh, ascertain risk and risk is the key. If you don't understand the risks properly you will make the bad decision. So if you look at any sensitivity analysis on the probability 60-40, 50-50, 40-60, 30-70 you will find out very quickly that the probability of success in Stewart Pharmaceuticals or in anything is uh, the probability of success or the risk of it actually working out is a major factor. So risk is where you should focus a lot of your time in getting that correct. If you get that correct, more than likely you'll make the right decision.